Welcome, ladies and gents. Join me today on a voyage of sonic discovery with the new Sir Analog Delay. <laughs> Hello folks, my name's Jack from Peach Guitars. Welcome today. We're going to check out a new pedal from our friends at Sir, and this time this is something different to everything we've seen from them in the past. You may know if you're a fan of the brand that recently John's son Kevin has sort of taken charge of the electronics department. He's left his dad to the guitar and amp building and Kevin Sir has decided to sort of brainstorm a few very cool new technological ideas in the effects pedal and sort of amp utility department. A lot of the cool products that have come out from Sir in the past few years have really been kind of the product of Kevin's making, which is very cool. It's very interesting to see the difference in the sort of design ideals that he has to his dad. It's a very cool partnership. Sir has really proven itself to become this really wide reaching brand that covers everything guitar players need to focus on, whether it be their actual instruments, what they're plugging them into, or indeed, what they have on the floor. And this new Discovery Analog Delay is the first time the company's ever ventured into the world of delays and reverbs, that kind of field. They recently tackled modulation with their Alexa Chorus. So it was very intriguing to a lot of people to see where they were gonna go next. And Kevin decided that this would be the best place to venture forwards. So, what is it? Essentially, the discovery is everything that Kevin Sir could possibly do to bottle everything he loves about old school analog and tape style delays into a format that's suitable for a pedal board. This has obviously been a subject that a lot of designers and builders have grappled with in the past, so it's only natural that a great designer like Kevin should turn his attention to trying to put his own spin on things. And what I think they've managed to do is create something that's wonderfully unique because it's still very familiar to anyone who's used to more old school style pedals. A lot of the boutique pedals on the market today, when you try and get this much functionality, can get a little bit crippling in terms of just working out how to operate it. So it ticks that box of usability, but it also ticks the box very, very well, in my opinion, of sound quality. And that's what we're gonna get into today. So the way to think of this really is a true analog delay. All the circuitry involved with your guitar's tone is fully analog, but of course you've got a digital brain allowing you to have tap tempo, preset functionality, and MIDI controllability as well. You also have a couple of clever switching options involved, including an external switch here on the back to use this remotely. You have an expression pedal input to control any parameter on the delay. And on the side, you have MIDI out, and MIDI in as well, so you can either use this to control other MIDI devices or have it be controlled by other MIDI devices. Now the point of this video really is to kind of offer up an honest interpretation of what I think of this. I'm gonna leave the fully comprehensive, really well detailed stuff to the likes of Mr. Pete Thorne and various other people who will be tackling the ins and outs of this pedal and every little thing it can do. So those are the videos to see if you wanna find out every little detail, but really in today's video, I'm just going to plug this thing in and enjoy the sounds that the Discovery has to offer. Now, there's no getting around this fact. This is an expensive pedal. And it's not the first time we've seen expensive boutique style pedals on the market, far from it. But it's interesting that Sir decided to go straight in here with their first venture into delays. Now, the question is really not one of price because if you're in a position to afford a pedal like this, it's not really about what it costs, it's about what you get for the money, the value proposition here. And I happen to think that despite it having that quite pri high price tag, quite high price tag, 
it's actually pretty good value and let me explain why. So as I said earlier on, the value really comes from the fact that you're getting all the old school tones of something like a deluxe memory man or those great old school 80s rack units and old school tape delays, all that stuff. The tones are right here, but you're getting 21st century fully cutting edge tech allowing you to control it. Now, once again, that is a formula that we have seen in other pedal manufacturers offerings, but I think the way Sir have implemented it, as I said before, is very user friendly and you instantly get to grips with what the vibe of this thing is all about. Now, the question inevitably will come up if you're looking for a delay, do you go for something like this that's very sort of specialist and niche with one particular field of delay that it's covering, or do you go for something much more wide ranging, a Strymon Timeline or a Boss DD500, for example? Now, that is a question really depending on your own personal needs. I would say though that if you're looking for the best quality analog delay that you can possibly find, you really do have to look for those dedicated units and that's exactly where this comes into the picture. If you are all about those classic modulated delays that stuff like Deluxe Memory Mans could offer you without the headache of having to run them, this is really one of the best examples and best proponents of that sound that I've ever used. It's really got the same kind of character to it and you really feel that although there's a lot of digital stuff going on in here, because of all that analog circuitry at the helm, you're really getting that kind of one-on-one -on -one connection, that kind of organic approach that people like to say. I think the value is really, that's where it lies in this pedal. You get the, the usability of a very familiar style pedal while still having the horsepower to go further if that's what you want to do. So here's a really big question that guitar players and musicians of any sort using gear always have is how the hell do I use this thing? And it's not always that obvious when you first sit down with a new piece of gear, sometimes you feel compelled to reach for a manual and I'm happy to say that in this pedals case, you don't really feel the need to do that. Indeed, I just plugged this in today and I really wanted to approach this video from this kind of standpoint of someone who might be trying one of these out for the first time. You really just want to plug it in and go. And that's exactly what I did. One of the clips you're going to hear is literally just plugging this pedal in, turning it on, and I didn't touch a single control. And I managed to get a really nice delay sound. And that is always the killer thing about a pedal or any piece of gear. Can you just plug it in and go? And if the answer is yes, then usually you're going to find that that is something that works for you. Now, obviously the actual functionality element is very important as well, because you've got to know how to use it once you do want to change things. So what Sir have done is given you a very cohesive, easy to understand control set. Basically the three controls right on the top here, the mix, time and regeneration, you'll see on any other delay pedal in existence. Everyone knows that the mix is how you adjust the level of the delay. The time is obviously affecting the time that the delay repeats for and the regeneration is the number of those repeats. And I'm happy to say that in true analog style, you can crank that regeneration up all the way, mess with the time, and you get those funky old school oscillations happening. So that stuff is par for the course with delay pedals. What's not necessarily standard is the stuff below it. You have fairly comprehensive EQ control here with a low cut and a high cut. The kind of common uh, understanding of analog delays is that they have this really nice warm tone. They lop off a lot of the high frequency content, leaving your guitar's signal at the forefront and the delay just kind of sitting comfortably behind it with this nice wall of warm mush in a good way. But what you can also do is tame exactly how much of that high frequency you lose and how much of the low frequency you lose as well. So you can get some very cool lo-fi delays out of this thing that you just couldn't do on conventional three or four control analog delays. Now it wouldn't be an analog delay if it didn't have a healthy dose of modulation on board. And what's nice about this is you have very, very intriguing levels of control and you can really explore exactly what that modulation's doing. Unlike some pedals that just have a simple button to turn it on and off, this one has speed and depth controls on the top, as well as three individual types of modulation. So you can choose between a square wave, sine wave, or triangle wave for your modulation tastes. So you've got a nice big clear screen up the top here, which will display your milliseconds or BPM of the delay time, whatever you're going for, and also show you which preset you're using when you scroll through the presets. It's just, again, really simple, but really just to the point and everything you really need and nothing you don't. So the only other piece of functionality to be aware of is up here, which allows you to 
cycle through your different tap divisions, quarter notes, dotted eighths, and so on. So that corresponds to the tap control down here, and you're going to see a couple of examples on the screen of scrolling through this, how it affects the actual time of the delay. So you can use this really quickly to jump between a long delay and a short delay without having to re-tap or mess with the time. If you just want the same perfect in-time delays at a different division, you just push the button. It's dead simple. You can also hold this little black button here and it'll alternate the display between showing you milliseconds of delay and the BPM of the delay. If you want to really get on the beat, if you're recording to a click or something like that, you can use BPM as opposed to the milliseconds that most guitar players are typically more familiar with. Up here is where you're going to scroll through your different presets. So if you want to store a sound to a preset bank, there's 127 presets available, which you can recall via MIDI or just by using the foot switches on the pedal itself. Once you want to store a particular sound to a preset, it's a very simple process of just holding down the preset button selecting where you want to save it and hitting it one more time to save it in that position. There's also a bunch of other little trim pots and stuff on the inside, which Kevin Sir himself, I believe, oversees on every single one of these individual units. So he kind of sets them to where they should be and you should feel no compulsion whatsoever to mess with them. Now, before we get to the last of the big three questions, which is obviously, how does this thing sound? There's a couple of other things we want to address. Yes. Quite large. Yes, in many ways. Incredibly funky sounds are available with the Sir Discovery Delay. Not very easily. It's not red, it's silver and blue. No, it runs on 18 volts, center negative power for increased headroom and dynamics. It certainly is, it's made in the USA like all other Sir products. Okay, so now we've got all that very important stuff out of the way. The most important question to answer is, what does it sound like? And that's something that is obviously going to be open to somewhat of an interpretation depending on who's playing and what you're using it for. With that very political answer out of the way, I just think this sounds absolutely brilliant. So analog delays, as everybody tends to know, like I say, they have this very warm sound and you kind of get what you're given with old school analog delays anyway. The, the charm of them and the magic was the way that they were designed to sound in a very particular fashion, you either got on board with that or you didn't. There wasn't much scope for, for maneuverability and tweakability and all that stuff. And that's obviously where the modern age of pedal design has opened up all the doors that players could possibly ever hope to break down. And you can still get all those great tones, but now with the advancements of the chip technologies in these pedals and the digital control elements, you can have stuff like tap tempo and presets to go between. So that's nothing new. What is new though, is the fact that this is coming from Sir. This is a company that's very well steeped in great guitar tone developments. Whether it was back in the 80s when John Sir was with Custom Audio in conjunction with the great Bob Bradshaw designing rigs for the biggest players of the day, he obviously learned a thing or two about functionality and how players actually want to use their gear that maybe some other manufacturers of gear didn't quite get on board with until it was too late. So what's cool is that's obviously passed down to his son Kevin and the design of this is like any other Sir product. It's really easy to use and to get great sounds out of straight away. The whole purpose of this video really is for me to just show you some of my favorite sounds and answer the question of, is it inspiring to play or not? It seems to be with delays more so than any other type of effect, guitar players want to be inspired. I think I felt pretty inspired just by plugging this straight in without even touching anything and that's always a very good sign. Though when I did delve in and start to play with the other divisions and the EQ and especially the modulation section on this, inspiration came a flow in pretty heavily. I think that you can get a lot of different sounds just by playing with these modulation controls alone. Almost get like a faux Leslie speaker thing happening if that's what you want. And indeed you'll hear a clip with like a sort of swirly Leslie slapback delay sound that I think worked really well to show off just what this pedal's about. Now, the one thing I will say this pedal also has in its favor is whether it's running at 18 volts and, and that's what's d what does it, I don't really know, but they've managed to capture an awful amount of headroom in this pedal. Now, while we kind of attribute delays, analog delays to having this warm, crunchy, gushy, mushy sound, 
you typically think that that's kind of the effect of like a, a dying battery or something in a fuzz pedal. It's the same kind of thing. But actually, what's important is not that this pedal is being pushed to its limits and that the chips inside are screaming for mercy being pushed to their dying breath. That doesn't happen with this at all. You have that warm gooiness, but you feel like the bandwidth is wide open. And that can't be said for every analog delay. This feels like it's got a lot of juice in it, like you're playing through a very high voltage amplifier or high voltage gain pedal or something like that. I think that that is a really important element to focus on here, and it really gives this pedal an extra level of dimension. It's almost like you're playing through a piece of rack gear or an old school outboard tape machine or analog delay or something like that. It's just got this extra life to it that I don't know if it's just from the voltage or from the very clever design, but whatever it is, it works in a way that I have to say few other delays have led me to give this fairly inspired talk on the way they sound. You either like it or you don't, but I think this one has a little bit of extra life. And in terms of the sound category, it gets some extra points for that.
So hopefully with all those questions addressed, the last question is, should you buy one for yourself? And I think that if you're after a very inspiring delay, I can honestly offer up this as one of the very best contenders that I've played in some time. We tend to be fairly conservative with guitar gear, and we also tend to stick with what we know. I certainly do when it comes to effects pedals like this. Will I take this off? Uh, will I take my other delay pedals off the board and put this on? There's a strong chance that that may happen. And I think if you're just interested in exploring a genuinely new section of this type of effect in the market, I think you really should do, do yourself a favor and check out the Discovery. Hopefully this video has shown you that just by plugging it in and sitting down and having a play, it does bring a fair amount of joy. I really enjoyed just playing this. If you want to find out more of the, the comprehensive details of what this pedal can fully do, like I say, check out Pete Thorne's video and Sir's official video. This is really just 
a kind of a little example of how a great new piece of gear can inspire you to make some very cool sounds and noises. So with all that out of the way, if you do want to pick up one of these Sir Discovery delays for yourself, click the link in the description box down below and head to our website, peachguitars.com. You can find out all the information you'd like to know about the Discovery, pick one up for yourself, and indeed find out any information about any of the other Sir products that we carry in stock there as well. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like down below, comment down below with your thoughts on the Sir Discovery. And if you're new here, hit subscribe and ring the bell as well so you're notified whenever we put out videos in the future. So all that's left to say is thank you very much for watching, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video.